Yeah, that's me. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm Laura Young. I am a user researcher at GovDK at GDS with Ariana, and I also work with Alec at Crown Commercial Service. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about my work at GovDK about how data can empower content designers. Um, I will say there was no mention of squirrels in this presentation, so apologies for that. Um, and I like wearing turtleneck jumpers, apparently. <laughs> um, so basically, um, we're working towards delivering the UK's government transformation strategy, which is to overhaul government's legacy content um, and outdated publishing practices by 2020, so government services are clear, well-maintained, and easier to find on GovDK. So what are the current problems that we need to address to meet this transformation strategy? So basically, the um, scale of GovDK content is absolutely massive. Um, at the time of this screenshot, there's about 460,000 items on GovDK. And when I say item, that's just a page. There's probably over 500,000 pieces. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, about 2,500 pieces of content every single month. Um, and speaking to content designers, there's no way of managing this content, knowing what they have, um, and it's just a bit of a mess. Um, but why is this really a problem, for instance, to end users? Um, well, it means it's hard for users to find the right thing because, um, because we don't really know what's out there. They could be, they could be confused by duplicate, duplicate content, older or out of date information. So our users aren't necessarily getting to the right stuff that they need, and therefore we could be leaving uh, GovDK with the wrong information or not finding the information they need in the first place. Um, another massive problem is that a lot of the content on GovDK is actually rarely even looked at. Over 30% of GovDK content has less than 10 page views in the last year. Um, I think it's because a lot of stuff's being put on there that shouldn't be put on there, and it's evidently obviously not useful to people, hence why it's not being looked at. Or people can't find what they actually need to find. Um, again, therefore, no page views um, for lots of content. Um, so what causes these problems? <coughs> well, firstly, Publishers can't access all their content in one place. Um, if you're a content designer, you have um, five different publishing applications, and all of your content for each one is listed within each publishing um, tool. So you could download all your content from the specialist publisher, you can download it from manuals, um, you can't get it all in one place, so you can't actually see all of your stuff um, in a holistic way, and therefore no way of managing it. Um, there's also really limited access to performance data. So um, not many teams actually have access to a performance analyst. Um, therefore, some of them have to go and Google Analytics themselves. Google Analytics is really difficult to use, as you can see. Um, you have to do loads of different queries to get what you want. Um, some content designers actually didn't even know data was available for them on the performance of their, of their content. So they didn't even bother looking at stuff like this. And um, even if you were really good at looking at stuff like this, it would take you ages to get what you needed. And um, content designers and publishers are under a lot of pressure to get content out as soon as possible. Therefore, um, wouldn't necessarily use data to inform their content design or decisions. Um, another thing is there's really clunky access to feedback data. So I don't know if you know what feedback data is, but um, on GovDK, you can actually write comments on how useful the feedback and um, how useful the content is you're reading. So on each of our pages, we've got, is this page useful, yes or no? And you can actually leave a comment saying if the content is useful, um, if everything is missing, or even just normal things like there's a spelling mistake on this page. Um, but if you want access to that data at the moment, you have to go to another app called Feedex, which is another really massive effort thing to do. And again, normally content designers are aware that it was available. So, um, publishers don't have evidence um, don't have evidence about why certain content isn't effective. Um, so, at the moment, publishers are having really difficult conversations with colleagues on why they, certain um, content can't go on GovDK, um, why they're pushing back against ministers um, for wanting every single speech on there, and because they're not using the data out there or they can't access it, um, it's literally their word against theirs. Um, their word against a policy person, and therefore we've got this massive um, mess of loads and loads of content on GovDK. So I've mentioned content designers and publishers um, throughout what I've said so far, um, and that's because not necessarily every single person who publishes to GovDK is actually a content designer. They could be anything from an admin assistant to a full-on managing editor, 
or they could just be um, an actual policy person who has access to GovUK to publish. Um, therefore, the level of content design and therefore um, knowledge of what should go on there really varies. Um, and we talk about them as publishers overall to avoid confusion with actual users of GovUK. And what are their user needs? So we did a massive discovery, and basically the high-level user needs that all publishers um, basically came out with was they need ownership of the things they work on, need evidence um, so they can change the thing they actually do, and they need support from the people around them to, in order to implement those changes. And our team vision um, was to give departments the data they need at the point they need it so they can manage their GovDK content over time. And we made a thing. <laughs> which is content data, um, a pretty self-explanatory name. Um, and I'll talk you through some of the features. Okay, cool. So, um, this is basically our, what's the word, nice, easy version of Google Analytics. It's actually fed by data from Google Analytics and FeedEx, that feedback um, data place where um, content designers have to go for their feedback. And we basically put it all in one place and it's really simple to use. Um, so you can search by organisation, you can actually search for URL. Um, so if you know your where your content is in GovDK, just copy and paste it there and you can get the data from it. Um, you can filter by organisation um, and obviously you can filter by all of them at the same time if you really want to. You can also change the time period. Um, so you know if, if you know when that piece of data content was um, published, then you can um, check by changing the time period. And then also, if you want the data on all your content, you can just download it in a CSV so you can manipulate it and do all your workings out and analysis on it outside the app. Mm -hmm. I nearly yawned during my own presentation then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> data is really interesting, I promise. Um, so if you click, I don't know if I explained that very well. So basically, if you click on the piece of content you want, Let's pretend we clicked on file wraps and law. You can get some high level metrics of the content, so unique page views, users you found the page views for, which is that thing I said, you can click yes or no at the bottom of each page. Um, and there's other some cool metrics down here, like your unique page views over time. So for the file wraps and the law, obviously around Bonfire Night in England, you've got a massive spike. But then there's also these other random spikes on the 1st of January and the 1st of March, which you can't work out. But if anyone knows, let me know. Um, and this is really important for content designers because if they know when there's certain peaks of particular content, it can actually help them manage what to prioritise in their work. Um, and obviously, pieces of content that might be updated more regularly, um, they can look at this and see what needs to be looked at first. Um, we also show the number of page views over time, which again is really useful for them. Um, this means you can see how many people have used internal search. Um, oh, am I looking at the wrong one? Oh, yeah. Sorry. You can also look at searches from the page. Um, this is really good because this means you can see how many people have used the internal search from the page. Um, and if you have access to Google Analytics, you can actually, actually see the actual term people have used on the page to search away from it. That makes sense. So it can show you that obviously if someone's landed on the page, not found what they wanted, and you can see the actual thing they were looking for in the search terms. So it can help content designers either put content in that's missing, or they need to redirect that person's direct correct page if those people are trying to get from that page to somewhere else. Um, we also give the number of feedback comments each page gets over time. Um, and again, you can actually link off to FeedEx Feed Explorer where you can see the actual comments people leave. Um, a lot of the comments are mainly based on their opinion of the policy the page is talking about. But there are actually some useful stuff sometimes about the content and how useful the information was as well. Um, we showed some other interesting metrics. So we've got reading time. Um, <laughs> and embarrassingly, the longest content on GovDK would take whopping eight hours and six minutes to read. <laughs> <laughs> I can't actually remember which one it was because it's probably quite a boring document, but we did know it was over eight hours to read, um, which is obviously really long. Um, so this metric can be useful, hopefully, for changing policy people's minds on what content should be published. Um, for example, a long reading time will show it's so lengthy, it will take an unreasonable time for a user to actually read it. Um, so we're hoping that's going to be useful for people to push back on lengthy, boring content. 
Um, and the important thing about having access to this data is it help publishers make decisions about the content they're working on. So hopefully it'll help them prioritise their work over time. So as I kind of mentioned before, it helps you push back against bad requests. Um, I think I mentioned about the, a minister wanting to have every single speech published on Gov.uk and using this, it will help the team be like, look, no one's reading your speeches, we don't want them on there. On there. It might be a bit embarrassing for him, but at least he'd be like, look, we've got the data to prove your speeches suck. Um, <laughs> in a nice way. Um, but you need data to make this, these conversations possible. Um, it becomes a lot more possible to push back on requests to publish content the users don't need, and um, you can't do that without the information in front of you. Um, inform better design decisions and monitor the content performance. So you can use our tool to monitor content performance, like I said, by looking at the search terms. They might suggest something missing from the page, people coming to the wrong place, um, and hopefully make uh, things a lot more usable for the user. So to conclude, this was our team's content quality hypothesis, which I think we've basically proved that poor publishing practice leads to poor co quality content, which leads to poor user experience. Um, so hopefully our tool will improve publishers' ability to manage and monitor their content over time and result in a better user experience for the end users of GovDK so they actually get to the content um, that they need first time. The end. <laughs>